Well, real quickly, I mean, uh, disappointed, but not, uh, you know, keep reminding myself we're 13 and 7, not 7 and 13. And if you really look at what's changed in the last two weeks, um, we just have not put the ball in the hole. It's kind of funny when I'm getting around Doug Herner all the time. He says you can run any offense you want, but at the end of the day, the ball's got to go in the basket. And uh, for a team that was shooting the ball so well, and we had good shots in that last game, we just haven't made a shot when you go 5 for 13 or 14 from the free throw line with not your worst free throw shooter shooting. Um, you know, that's been our biggest struggle defensively. We've been okay, not great in the last game, but not bad considering, uh, you know, they shot 48. But the uh, first game in a long time, the turnovers reared its ugly head again, and they got some layups off of a, a few turnovers. And when you only take 45 shots, the difference between two and three shots on layups would, would take you into the 30s or into the high 40s. So... Trying to keep things into perspective best I can, but disappointed in the fact that we're not shooting the ball as well. And uh, boy, for a team that consistently did a pretty good job of that, that's the biggest disappointment. Um, moving forward, uh, you know, we're we're looking at getting out there like some of you are. Um, we've been in touch with the Big Ten office since last night, and there's a lot of things that are problems and. Um, we have actually changed our whole practice time. We're practicing here in a few minutes. I'm going to miss more school and all this, but uh, we have to get out of here earlier. And uh, so there's some concerns with the travel. They've pretty much guaranteed us if we get there, we'll play the game. My worry is we get there and then it gets delayed and we're stuck. But it's the way of the world. That's the way it is. There's no way we can control it, so we're going to do what we can do. As far as Rutgers goes, they've been a team that's played a lot of people close. They've lost some close games, a lot like Northwestern was doing, and I didn't get to see that game last night. I heard they dominated most of the game, a lot like Penn State was doing. And so that's the worry, you know, that they're they're a very good team as far as uh, got a great guard in Mac um, and a great uh, forward in Jack. So the Mac and Jack show is where they're getting a lot of their points, and uh, they're awfully good at it. Uh, as far as those two players, some of the other players have struggled a little bit, and that's why the up and down. So I'll open up some questions on where we are if uh, you want to ask them. Obviously, for you, us, like my flight literally just got canceled, but for you guys, where it gets kids out of routine, Tom, that's the thing that a lot of fans maybe don't understand. Getting to the court is one thing, but all the ancillary stuff, how do you deal with it? Well, I don't know. I haven't had to deal with it much. You know, I haven't had to do this much a few times, but this is a little more concerning. I mean, we got parents calling and, you know, wondering. And, uh, you know, I've been away from the UP long enough, and I'm, I'm saying this seriously, not jokingly, that that uh, is even a little concerning for me. You know, 30 inches of snow up there when I was growing up was just another day at work, and, and we had the equipment to clear it, and there was no big deal. But, but uh, you know, this can close down a city uh, when you're talking New York, and and more importantly is the blizzard conditions and all that. So, I mean, safety is still going to be first, and that's what we said to the NCAA or to the Big Ten. And, and Rutgers has done a great job. They were the ones that contacted us and communicating all these things with KP. They've done a, a marvelous job. But, uh, yeah, you know, like changing even today, you know, calling them an hour and a half ago and telling them, hey, we got to leave at, at 3.15 instead of at uh, 6 o'clock. You know, uh, we've got to do this, we've got to do that. you got to get your classes straightened out. we got to call those people and make sure they understand that we're not skipping class, that – you know, this is all legit. And so it is out of the routine. When we get there, um, hopefully we can get back into a little more routine. But it's it's funny. You go to New York, you know, you don't get hotels where you have walkthroughs. You know, the hotels you sleep in, the rooms are about as big as this podium. So everything changes a little bit. But it is what it is. And we just got to make do what we got to make do on. We got a big game that we, we need to win. And, and that's the way we're going to approach it. So I... Until everything happens, I just want to get on the ground there is all I want to do. Uh, Coach, aside from the weather, Denzel Valentine keeps getting himself in foul trouble. I'm just yeah. wondering, you know, how does he avoid that? Is that just being out of place defensively? You know, I, I watched the film of that game, and I, I swear to you, there are some things that we're, we're just getting to the point where everything's touch. I mean, his, his two fouls were 
were unbelievable. And, uh, but that has been, you know, we talk about all the problems, and we've had a few. But probably more than anything, we had four starters on the bench. Uh, Costello played three minutes in the first half. Schilling played seven. Um, uh, Valentine played, I think it was nine or ten. And somebody else was on the bench. And, and we're just not that deep, nor are most teams that deep. So we were in a lot of foul trouble there. We've been... We don't play that kind of defense we used to play. Um, I've had a slight problem with that myself and not with the player. But uh, we got to do a better job of it because if you look at some of our last Maryland here, he played like 27 out of 50 minutes, didn't play eight or nine in the overtime. We're, we're not, I mean, he's our most solid player. And uh, he can play defense, offense. He's one of our leading rebounders. And he's starting to spend some halves on the bench. And I think it was Joe that asked me that million-dollar question, you know, do you have to change? We have to change a lot of things if we're going to keep getting efficient. If if the rules keep changing like they are, we do. But keeping a – when I say that, keeping a kid in there with two fouls, which I haven't done very often in my career, might have to change. But if he gets his third one, then we're really in trouble because then he's got to play a completely different way. And then, So it's a coin flip, and I guess I don't trust the guys I'm flipping against, if you can read between the lines. Tom, Tom I don't want to beat a dead horse here, but Travis said after the game it was just another case of the other team, whether it was energy or just wanted it more, they just had more from the opening jump. Obviously, these are great athletes. What, what, how is this continuing to be an issue? And what do, you, what do you say as a head coach when your captain's saying, well, we just didn't have it from the start? Mm. Boy, I, I would disagree with that 100%. I mean, um, we've had some games when we started out, Iowa, we started out great. And then we, we, we if you look at where we slump, it's when we sub. So I, I, I don't mean to downplay, but he's, on, he's crazy on that. That's ridiculous. I mean, we, we had the best practice, two practices we had going into that game. So, you know, kids will say something frustrated. They may say something on Twitter, um, you know. But, no, I, I, I can't agree with Trab at all on that. If he said that, uh, you know, I'm going to have to ask him why because we were ready to play. We, we, we get into the game and we're, we're in foul trouble right off the bat. Um, you know, I, I just can't think of many games. I mean, everybody's talking about this start. We started off Northwestern well. We started off Penn State well. Um, we've had better starts than you think. Maryland over there, even it was eighteen sixteen, and then all of a sudden things happened, you know. I don't think we started out great, but I don't think we started out poorly. And and the only game that I felt like we we didn't have great practices before was the Maryland game out there. So, you know, when you lose, everything happens. Uh, when you win, everything goes beside. If you, if you make shots, you can make bad screens, bad plays, bad everything, and the ball goes in. If you miss shots, you can make great screens, great plays, great passes, and it doesn't look good. So, um, you know, the one thing that's funny, uh, what I tell my team, after even a tough loss, and whether you believe this or not, I always tell them, hey, I'm not going to tell you what to say to the media. Don't lie to them. Tell them, tell them the way it is because usually I'm upset about it. And uh, But I also think that sometimes kids have a different way of evaluating. You know, a loss could mean something different. And, uh, maybe it was personal, too. Yeah, maybe it was personal because he has no points in the first half and 23 in the second, or, you know, he has a couple in the first half. But... But I really believe that uh, I tell you, I think I did tell you that I was concerned about our walkthrough and that at, at Maryland. But for the most part, this team has practiced pretty well. Um, nothing's changed on that. So I feel pretty good about most of that. Uh, you know, we, we've had some weird days, too. Like yesterday, couldn't practice. We had a one-day prep before we played Northwestern. Schedule is really difficult with this one day off so that we can all take care of ourselves that the NCA puts on um, that I'm getting sicker of because TV and, uh, you know, what are we going to do if we get stuck out there? Then, we'll, you know, does that count as a practice date? Is it not? 
if we practice out there in the snow, do we get our hands slapped? You know, which way are we working here? And I, I am getting tired of that. I, I think that should be up to a coach and up to an institution. But because there's different circumstances all the time. But for the most part, guys, I've been really pleased with the way we've practiced. Um, we, it's interesting you brought up the, the fouls and, and those things. That has hurt us, and that is our fault. I mean, we can't foul. But we've had a couple of games where, you know, you go back to Duke and I got Dawson and, and Valentine sitting there for 9 and 11 minutes in the first half. And, you know, we're playing with some bizarre lineups. You look at the Maryland game here, it was completely um, some problems with that. So we got to address it. It's, you know, you don't want to tell a kid – don't follow and be so passive. I mean, we're so much more passive than we used to be. It's scary. But the rules change. we got to change with them. That's my fault. Just while I'm thinking about it, you guys are flying into Newark? Is that yes. correct? Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, I think that just changed too. Oh, that just changed. Um, I think we're flying into not New York. No, Newark, New Jersey. Yeah, I know, not oh, Newark. Okay. Um, KP just left, but I, I okay. think we just changed it again. Uh, a half hour ago. Yes, I think it is Trent. Oh, Trent, yes. okay. Uh, Very good. A couple of questions for you on, on adjustments, Tom. First of all, the, the honorary Larry Lage question, because you have done man pressure before. Have you thought about doing that at all with this team? And then even the zone question, have you, because of the rules. Yeah, have the you zone question, I definitely, it? you know, we're working on some things. The man stuff, uh, you know, um, if Larry's – Looking down from wherever he is, I know he's still here. On, I, I think he's still here. I never see him anymore. But, uh, um, you know, there will be very few times that I'll press probably in my career. I don't believe in it. I don't think it I don't think it serves things right. I think at the end of the game, if you're behind, you have to. I don't think you can become a great defensive team if you're that. That's just the philosophy that I have. Uh, there's a lot of pretty good coaches that must think the same way. One just won a 1,000 games thinking the same way. So, um that part of it the other part with that is if you don't have great depth you got to remember we went half the year with no subs on the perimeter um you can't do things like that Uh, the way they call fouls now um i'm i'm seeing less of that even around i'm seeing your second question's a better one um i think there is no i mean better easier to answer um i've seen more zone this year than i've seen in the history of the game and people are wondering why scoring's going down. When you zone somebody, it takes longer to score. It takes, you know, your offense is going to be slower. And uh, so I think we've outfoxed ourselves a little bit with all these rule changes. And, we're, you know, they wanted to speed up the game. They wanted to have more scoring, and it's kind of working in the opposite. I think for a couple of reasons. More people are zoning. Zone offenses, your possessions are going to be longer. You're going to have less possessions. And... Um, What's happened with the rule changes to me is your best players are on the bench. And so you don't have the best players and athletes playing. So, yeah, I, I got a problem with it. I, but I don't think it's with the officials. I think it's with our rules and the changing of our rules. And we fix one problem, but it creates another one that I think was hidden. So you may see a little bit of zone. <coughs> Believe it or not, I played it in two games and you didn't even know it. One in the last minute. Tricked you. Yeah. Yeah, it's it was trickery. When did you play? Um, at the end of uh, not the last possession, the last couple possessions. Of, was it Northwestern? Penn State. One out of two. Yeah. I have to look it up. It worked like a charm. <laughs> Tell me that. Because but you know why it worked? Because their shot that they took didn't go in. Just like why our offense doesn't work when our shot doesn't go in. Tom, is there any other tactics to get these guys going at the free throw line besides just practicing it every day? Do you, do you lay off them at some point? I'm into or? voodoo. Um, I'm not into, you know, I I mean, no. I, I guess, you know, if I thought it was a – I mean, we had good free throw shooters missing in the last game, you know. And, uh, I mean, Marvin and, and even Kobe. Kobe's a very good free throw shooter. You know, I just – it happens, you know, it happens. You go through these stretches, it happens. I mean, Dawson and, and Schilling are working on them, and they are improving. But, 
you know, you'll get, I'm, I'm sure you guys get more than I do because you have Twitter and everybody is telling you to you know, go to this person and do this person and do this. And, you know, I've had guys over the year tell me we should shoot underhand and, you know, you get all those things. And um, I say that if you just put your time in, it's going to get better and you got to get a little confidence. And, and some people are mentally weaker than others. And um, so it takes a little longer, but practice makes perfect at most things you do. After you played Coach K at Square Garden, he made a comment that he, at this point in his career, he's more into not losing than winning. You're a Hall of Fame coach one day. Do you feel that same way, that it gets to the point where it's no longer about winning, it's just not losing? Yeah, you definitely do. I mean, it's just part of the nature of the beast, you know. It's like I said, we're 13-7, and seven, not 7-13, seven and 13, you know. It, it's the outside world just – kind of comes down on you, you know, and uh, you forget how to coach, you forget how to do this. I mean, I talked to him a little bit Friday, you know, it's it's kind of interesting. I, You know, you get to watch more on him because they had all those shows on him. And, you know, you, you forget, everybody talked about his start. You forget in, I don't know, a couple year period in the mid-90s, I think it was when, uh, that's why I'm going to fire Matt. I think he's bad luck because I think he was, the, he's the only one that brought Duke down. They had two years in a row, I guess, where they weren't. Okay, uh, I guess I guess you can look at the glass half full or the glass half empty, you know. And it was half full for a while, but that thing went empty a little bit right now. And uh, but you know, it was interesting to listen and 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 realize that if you stay somewhere long enough, if you watch somebody long enough, you're always going to see their warts. Recruiting is a great example of that, you know. Hey, we're not perfect, but I'm going to tell you something. This is a pretty good basketball team. When we're shooting the ball well, we're a real good basketball team. We defended better. If you told me again that now our three bigs. I mean, Dawson, you know, we're talking about what he can't do. He's he's averaging 12.3 rebounds a game. I, I, I'm going to ask you to look it up. I don't remember a guy averaging 12. Maybe Reggie Evans. I, I don't know who's averaged 12 here in a long time. But And, uh, you know, he's scoring 12 points a game. He's He's defending very well. You know, Schilling and Costello have still been pretty consistent. It's Those were the thought things that I thought would be the negatives or the question marks, you know. Um, we'll shoot the ball better again. And we're not taking bad shots. We had some great looks at the basket. But back to your question, I'm not alluding from it, is uh, sure, I, I, I tell you guys all the time, you fear being fired, you fear losing. Those things would, would drive you, and I think that's what drives Mike. And, and it's, yeah, the wins are never as good. That's just the way it works. And uh, I don't feel bad for him. I don't feel bad for me. I don't feel bad for any of us. It's, you know, it's the monster we created. But I don't think it's much different in your lives. You know, you want to be successful every day, and and, uh, and that's the way it works when you, when you, when you're, wound that way when your motor goes that way so it's it's not a bad thing um, but I, I had an interesting moment listening to him say things like that too because you start asking yourself is that the way I am and then you say I hope so I hope so because it's worked pretty well for him you're only you're only 519 away from him now yeah uh, and catching any, yeah, catching any, him. any perspective on that and will you will you call him Oh, I already did before, and uh, I won't after for a while because you can imagine what it's like in in Krzyzewskiville. But, uh, you know, uh, did text him. He texts back, and, uh, you know, I, I think it's uh, it's just an unbelievable accomplishment to do it at the same place and withstand that kind of standard of excellence for that long is incredible. But I, what I didn't realize in the shows of, you know, was it, your years, or was it ninety four, ninety five when they when he got hurt, and then the next year they weren't very good, and he said they were thirty three and thirty three for two years stretch, and over two years, I mean, yeah, and uh, you know that was a while ago, but it wasn't that while ago when you think of his career, and so you just think at the beginning he struggled, but everybody goes through some things, you know, and um, and listening to him talk about losing twice the last three years in the first game, you know. Um, those are the way it was. But I, 
I, I thought the greatest story I heard was when I was told in Maryland, and then I heard Mike Shishesky say it the other day, and that's when he lost to Virginia by 44 points. And he went to a Denny's, and this guy raised a glass and said, uh, here's to forgetting tonight. And he raised a glass and said, no, I'll put that down. Here's to never forgetting tonight. And I think that's, that's the way it is. The losses hurt more, but the losses you learn more from. And, uh, you know, right now, uh, as I look at our – should we have played better in some games? I'm more upset with how we played in a couple games than I am with losses. I'm not sure anybody would have beat Maryland the day we played them out there. You know, but Maryland's been, you know, last night I didn't watch the game. I heard they were down 16 and lucked out to win. You know, if you look at our league and you look at the league um, uh, sheets that they send out on where you are, we're in the top of the league in a bunch of categories. And even field goal percentage and things like that, we're in the top two or three, which means the whole league is struggling against each other. And we're, you know, they can beat us by 16. They can go to Indiana and lose by 20. And Indiana can go lose by 20 to Ohio State. And Michigan can take Wisconsin overtime and lose by 20 there. And Ohio State can lose twice to Iowa. If you really look at it, it's the way the league is this year. And should you be able to stay above that? You hope so. But we're not talented enough to do that with the injuries we've had and, the, and, and key players being out on the bench or not playing as well. And we got to get them playing well. We better. We got to get them playing in the game. Can't have a couple key guys on the bench. The only guy that hasn't been in any real foul trouble has been Trice, and we're getting him to play better defense, so maybe he will be in foul trouble. <laughs> so that's kind of the way the lay of the land is right now. And uh, there's nobody panicking here. Um, if Trice thinks we didn't, you know, get off to a good start, we didn't, but. You better remember when you're the captain and the quarterback, it's your job too, just like it is the coaches. And uh, I don't say that against them. I just say that's what we're working on. Yesterday we had a great practice, but it was only an hour because we just came off a game and a trip. Today now it's going to be I'm going right from here to our practice, and I'm sure it'll be a little helter-skelter. Guys are running from there. They had to go to class till noon. They're running from those classes it's the way it is, and sometimes you have those kind of years, and sometimes you don't. But I think this team will bounce back, and uh, we'll see if I'm right or wrong in the weeks to come. One last question. Tom, when, you, when you have a team that relies so much on shooting, um, is it just kind of the way it's going to go sometimes? See, you have these I, up and downs? Or you, you know what? I, I disagree with you, Matt, and I, here's why I say that. Um, I thought that's the way it was going to be at the beginning. We became, at one time, we were ranked one or two best defensive team in the league, and we were ranked nationally. Our field goal percentage is still decent. Our rebounding has been way better than I thought it would be. But are you saying that we're not throwing the ball inside? I'm just saying, when, but we, we've talked about how when a few of the guys, when the shots don't go in, it affects the rest of their game. Is that... I mean, is that just kind of how it goes when, when you have players like that? And how much tougher is it when it's not just, oh, let's fix this or yeah. fix that? Yeah, you know, I'd say that we don't go inside quite as much as we did with Nixon and, and uh, Payne. So we got that. But our inside guys are scoring decently, decently. Um, I would say that I don't know the answer to that because this probably is the best three-point shooting team I've had. And so I've never had to go through, you know, I'm shocked that a Denzel would let it affect the rest of his game. I don't think he will from here on out. I think he made a little more of a commitment the other day and said, I, he said to me, I can't let that happen. It wasn't me saying it to him. And I think he did a better job of that when he was in the game. But he's got to stay in the game uh, is the big thing. If you really went and looked at our stats and looked at uh, – because you know, that's what you do when you lose a game. You kind of – absorb everything and then you start going back and seeing the maryland game the duke game um the kansas game down there you you know you look at you know trice was going through then sick and everything and and missing layups and and so i have some valid things in my mind that make me not panic in the fans mind they're gonna panic if we lose a game i understand that and don't even blame them but i don't think that uh 
we're going to let that shooting woes get to us like we did. But we've still been a pretty good defense team. That last team shot 48%. They get four layups on turnovers, which hasn't happened to us. You haven't heard me talking about turnovers for touchdowns very much this year. That happens. You only take 44 shots. The difference in shooting 38 and 48 might have been three of those layups. And so half-court-wise, I didn't think we were bad. We just... Every time we breathed, we, we seemed to foul a guy. Now, at the end, we did try to foul. But through a lot of that game, you know, I was disappointed in that. I really was. I was disappointed in the way it was called. I was disappointed the way we reacted to it. But if we don't have, if we have three starters on the bench, if we have Denzel out of the game a lot, we're not going to be as good a team. Uh, that's the way it is. So we got to do a better job with him. If it means I got to zone more, then I got to zone more. That is up to me. If I got to pull him after one foul, if I got to try to play him with two, uh, you know, that's what I got to do. I got to do something different because it isn't working the way we did it.